Good afternoon, assalamu alaikum. I'd like to welcome you all to the third annual Neuro-Oncology Symposium. My name is Maliha Taufiq, and I'm a medical student here at the Aga Khan University, Pakistan. We will now be starting the ninth session where the topic of discussion is artificial intelligence in neuro-oncology. And I would like to introduce the chair and the co-chair for this session. Our chair for this session is Dr. Yasser Ayaz. Dr. Yasser Ayaz is the chairman and central project director at the National Center of Artificial Intelligence, Pakistan, and the head of the Department of Robotics and Artificial Intelligence at the School of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering at the National University of Science and Technology, Pakistan. He holds a PhD specializing in robotics and ma machine intelligence from the Tohoku University, Japan. Dr. Yasser Ayaz is the founder of the Pakistan's first Department of Robotics and Artificial Intelligence at NAST. Moreover, he has authored an, over 130 international publications and has three product design patents registered in his name with several others in the review process. Our co-chair for this session is Dr. Fatma Mubarak, an associate professor here at the Aga Khan University. She has demonstrated history of working in hospital and healthcare industry. She is skilled in MRI, clinical research, medical education, and advanced neuroimaging. She is the first, in first international outreach member of the American Society of Neuro-Oncology. Yeah. I'd like to invite them over to the stage. Thank you so much for introducing us. Uh, so I'm Bilal Mother Qureshi. I'm section head in radiation oncology at Aachen University Hospital. And I am the uh, trying to compensate for uh, Dr. Fatma Mubarak, who could not make it because of a few essential reasons. So uh, I would take the opportunity to introduce our speakers in this session titled as Artificial Intelligence in Neuro-Oncology. Uh, I would first introduce Dr. Tahir Mustafa Madni. Dr. Tahir Mustafa is currently working as an assistant professor in the computer science dep department of ComSets. He is an expert of medical imaging processing and he is, has the opportunity to get the grant as a co-principal investigator on medical imaging and diagnostic worth 97.57 million rupees funded by Higher Education Commission of Pakistan. He has more than six years post-doctoral experience of teaching and research in medical image processing, in computer vision, and in deep learning. Our next speaker after Dr. Tahir Mustafa would be uh, Ms. Maria Nazir, who is currently pursuing her PhD from the Institute of Space Technology in Islamabad. She uh, has five years of professional experience as a lecturer in the electrical engineering department of Normal University in Islamabad and is currently working as a team leader at the medical image and diagnostic lab, NCAI Islamabad, Pakistan. She received her master's degree in 2014 from the University of Engineering in Texela as a full scholar. The third speaker in this session today would be uh, Mr. Noman Bashir Bhatti, who received his MS degree in com computer sciences from Comset University in Islamabad and is currently working as a research assistant at the Medical Imaging and Diagnostic Lab of the National Cancer Center of Artificial Intelligence in Pakistan in Islamabad. He has five years international journals and he has uh, around five international journals and conference publication and his research interests also include artificial intelligence, medical imaging, computer science, uh, vision and beyond that deep learning and explainable artificial intelligence. So I would now request Dr. Tahir Mustafa uh, to share his presentation and his thoughts and this would be followed by the other two speakers. Thank you.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, we myself, Dr. Tahir Musa Madni from Concepts University, Islamabad. And we are working for the last four years on the artificial intelligence for uh, medical imaging and diagnostics lab funded by the HEC. And it uh, uh, comes under the umbrella of National Center of Artificial Intelligence, which was being constituted uh, by the previous government. Uh, so, so uh, mainly our uh, aim for the development of this lab was to work on three different products or three different projects. One was the brain tumor segmentation and survival prediction. The other one was the breast cancer diagnosis. And the third one was the tuberculosis diagnosis. So this is the team uh, with the blend of all the professors and different uh, uh, assistant professors and having some uh, uh, assistant, pro uh, some research assistants, research associates who is working for the last three to four years with us. And uh, these are the uh, some of the students which have been already been graduated. So it's more or less like a research and development uh, for the last three to four years. Uh, further on, uh, now we I'm going to focus on three main products which we are going to build on. So one is the brain tumor segmentation, then is the tuberculosis diagnosis, and also the one is the breast cancer identification using the mammograms. So I'll go as a overview how we are actually dealing with those sort of problems in the artificial intelligence. The very first step is to uh, gather the data. So one is to get the benchmark data sets, which, is, which are already publicly available. And then we have also collected the data from the local uh, medical uh, facilities. And based on that, we have actually come up with uh, uh, some pre-processing on them. And later on, we have trained some different models, some AI-based models. Those are basically based on the CNN-based models, some UNET, some transformers. And after that, we have validated those models. And uh, now we are at the stage for the deployment of those models after having a quite a good uh, accuracy on them. So uh, number one is a tuberculosis. So tuberculosis is particularly uh, a disease, uh, a bacterial disease which usually uh, can occur at any part of the body. But as we know that it is most common at the lungs. So what uh, we are actually working on, we just take the chest x-rays and based on that, we can actually identify whether the patient is, uh, uh, is having a tuberculosis or not. So uh, mainly our uh, diagnostic system takes an input as a chest x-rays and based on that, it just generates the heat maps on some AI-based algorithms. So the main contribution for this product is mainly it just classify the tuberculosis Secondly, it just identifies, so it's an object detection as well. So it detects where, the, uh, where, uh, uh, where particular the disease is. And then it also can have an accuracy of more than 98%. And uh, uh, particularly it helps the physicians or the radiologists to diagnose at a very early stages. So if the patients are coming in a hospital, so they can just identify who are the most critical patients before actually going for the, uh, taking the samples for that particular lungs. So how it actually work? Uh, number one, as I have mentioned earlier, so at the first point, it just takes an input as a chest x-rays uh, from the local data sets and from the benchmark data sets. And later on, we have performed some pre-processing after the pre-processing, we come up with some of the training of the models, like basically the transformers. And uh, further on, we have validated, and then now we are at the point where we can just deploy it in different hospitals. So how it actually works, this is a basic AI-based model in which we are actually working on. So from the very top layer, we are having on the left-hand side, we have the chest X-ray as an input, and it just captures the uh, different features from local features to global features till the right end of the first layer at the top. So that is part of the classification. After the classification, we just give as an input to our next layer in which we are actually identifying where the tuberculosis is. So first, that patient is suffered with a tuberculosis and then when, uh, at what point, at, at what point it, that particular patient have a tuberculosis. So this was, uh, we are participating in different international challenges, which have been evaluated by third parties all around the world. And we stood uh, number one at, for the last uh, six months on the classification and also on the, uh, on, and also on the detection of the tuberculosis. 
So the link is also available. You can just go and have a look on that as well. So this is a more or less a DICOM viewer for based on some of the main features and also the AI based DICOM viewer for the tuberculosis. So then the second project what we are working on is on the breast cancer. So it's more or less the same story over here. We have the mammogram as an input. We, uh, we have uh, first got the benchmark data sets. Later on, we got different data sets from different hospitals locally. So it's the same as this, like if a radiologist has been trained in one country, so he knows more or less the diseases uh, which occur in that particular country. So if a radiologist has been trained in different parts of the world, then obviously he's quite experienced because he has seen different events of those mammograms. So we are doing the same thing. At the first phase, we are getting the benchmark data set. And further on, we are taking those benchmark data sets with some local data sets. So we are fine tuning them. So later on, we just, uh, after some pre-processing normalization, we just pass these mammograms to the uh, deep learning models. Deep learning models, then further on, we have performed the validation and now it's all, uh, even also ready for the deployment. So this is uh, basically on uh, to identify different uh, portions of uh, the breast cancer where we are identifying different densities of those, uh, those portions because density, if a portion is dense, then it actually is might be going towards the cancer. So uh, these are different images of that application. So we have also come up with the same sort of uh, uh, computer-aided diagnostic system, which is a DICOM viewer. On the left-hand side, we have just a normal sort of uh, image processing techniques, which usually the radiologist and uh, the practitioner view. And on the right end, we have different AI-based system, which actually the models are being trained on. So this one is, again, we are going to identify the dense uh, parts of the breast and identifying where the cancer is lying. And it is having an accuracy uh, and, uh, and it can be also being used for the practitioners uh, for the breast cancer. Then the third one, the project which we are working on is a brain tumor segmentation and it's a brain whiz. So it's more or less the same thing, like we are having a different data set and we again, we have uh, used the benchmark data sets like the BRADS. And now we are actually fine tuning those, our models with the local data sets, which are actually available over here in this country. So after that, those, uh, those MRI volumes have been passed to the BrainWiz uh, CAD systems. And that BrainWiz actually identify the segmentation. Uh, it segments out the tumors part and then even the survival, how much that per particular patient is going to survive. So this is uh, the same pipeline which we are following because actually we are following the same pipeline. The reason why I'm showing different products apart from the brain tumor, is those uh, AI-based technologies are going to develop some of the relationships between the data, which mostly the human can't actually make different combinations of the data. So if we have different data, so that data, the models can actually learn those features out of the data to identify or to segment out those, uh, those problems. Okay, so first we have the brain uh, volumes, MRI volumes from the BRADS and then from the local data sets from different diagnostic centers and also different hospitals. We have performed some pre-processing on that. And then we have uh, gone through some unit based model that is again, the artificial intelligence based model for the segmentation. And from that, we are actually going to for the validation of the data. And then actually uh, we can actually deploy this particular uh, volume as well. So this is the flow of brain waves. So the very first thing we give the volume as a whole volume to, uh, to, to the skull stripping. So the volume is basically based on different modalities, T1, T2, flare, and T1CE. And also we give it a different, uh, uh, different views from coronal, sagittal, and axial views to our model. So first thing what it do, it just strips off the uh, different sort of uh, skulls out of that volume. And after stripping off the volume, because the skull, the intensity in the image is more or less close to the tumors as well. So it's very necessary to remove that skull from uh, that particular volume. 
Further on, that skull strip volume has been passed to the brain tumor segmentation module. And that module I actually identified different parts of the brain tumors, like uh, enhancing, non-enhancing edema. And uh, so after identifying, and the tumor core as well. So after identifying those tumors, it generates a heat map out of it. And uh, further on, at the last, that particular uh, segmented volume is in pass to another modules, which is known as the survival prediction, which we give, which we have trained based on some uh, age factors, some other factors like radiomic features, and uh, like the texture, the shape, the size of the tumor. And based on that, on the rightmost, you can see, we can actually identify how much that particular patient is going to survive. So we can actually pre-plan what strategies we can use it in the treatment planning. So that particular module is, uh, can have uh, uh, the classification, whether a MRI volume got the tumor or not. The second thing is the segmentation of different uh, tumors. And then the last one is the survival prediction. So it comes with a 91% of accuracy, and it also can be used with the physicians to actually uh, diagnose whether that particular patient who came in the hospital, which patient we have to pay more attention on it. So it just takes like uh, three to four minutes to identify the whole volume, which is containing of almost 155 slices of that particular MRI and 155 slices having four modalities and then three different views on it. So we have participated in different challenges. Uh, again, a BRATS challenge. On the middle, you can see the survival prediction uh, right there. Uh, and that particular part is we stood uh, number third in worldwide and there were a lot of uh, other people around the world. And that is again being evaluated by a third party. So that is a dicom for uh, for the brain waves. So on the left-hand side, we can see different, uh, different features which we can identify, which we can find out on the different DICOM viewers. And then on the right end, we have the AI-based support for, uh, for the doctors, for the neurosurgeon, neuro practitioners to identify, okay, what the model is actually predicting. So this all solution is not only, is not going to, uh, is just going to assist the person or the doctor to whether that particular patient is being infected by a tumor or not. So these are all three different projects. These are the some, uh, some brainwaves project. And on the left-hand side, you can see different tools which have been available in different DICOM viewer. And on the right-hand side, it's an AI-based window where we, the models are actually going to predict. So on the left-hand side, we have the normal sort of thing, different icon views, and you are, might be already aware of them, like painting, zooming, inverting. So those sort of all features are available for any volume. And on the, on the particular right-hand side, I'll go on the rightmost one. It's related with the brain tumor. So it is actually identifying, okay, the tumor is there. So which category the tumor is? then exactly which slide that particular tumor is lying on. So it actually identifies the slide where the patient or the doctor can actually identify, okay, there on this slide, rather viewing all the 155 slices, he can just directly jump on that particular slide where the tumor is quite obvious. So uh, those are different AI-based modules. Like on the bottom one, we have different sort of uh, uh, features where we can just load T1, T2, different modalities. And on, uh, so this is a basic uh, uh, screenshot for the DICOM viewer for the tuber classes. The same goes for the breast cancer and the same goes for the brain tumor. Only the rightmost and the bottom uh, widgets are being changed based on some different feedback from different doctors. And we have made it a one screen short uh, user interface so the doctors will have a less hazard to understand or to learn that particular uh, system. And that is more quite related to the other DICOM viewers. So we have actually performed, uh, before developing, we have actually performed different swapped analysis and we have identified different products which are already available in the, uh, around the world. And then we have identified, okay, which features they are providing and we have successfully, Alhamdulillah, have come up with all the features with any other DICOM viewer can support.
So in the case of brain tumor, we have the segmentation, we have the survival prediction, also we have uh, the different uh, sort of classification as well. The same story goes with the tuberculosis diagnosis systems and also with the breast cancer. So the SWAPT analysis has been already been performed to compare and to uh, make an evaluation among those different viewers. So these are different uh, uh, sort of hospitals which we have approached during our studies. And obviously we come up with the benchmark data sets and also we come up with the data set uh, from these different hospitals for different facilities. And those facilities, we are even hired a radiologist and also a technologist who are going to annotate those particular data for our models. So these are different list of different hospitals. And uh, from the publication, I'll request Ms. Maria to just proceed further. Thank you, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Marian. I'm the team lead of medical imaging and agnostics lab, and I'm working since three years. So uh, coming back towards the overview of our lab, because since uh, it's been four years that we are alive and we are working in this domain, so there is a lot more to discuss about considering our progress. So uh, apart from these AI-based diagnostic tools, we are uh, actually working on many other areas as well. So like as far as considering our publications, we have almost uh, sub, uh, we have almost 21 published research papers in reputed journals and conferences and almost 10 are related to brain tumor segmentation and classification similarly we have uh, secured So, uh, okay, so uh, for obviously we have to sustain our lab and uh, for this we, ha we have uh, submitted numerous research proposals. So almost 25 have been submitted in which recently we submitted uh, two for, uh, one of our proposal with Dr. Athar in Ignite. So uh, we are actually working to sustain and to deploy our products. So for this we used to work and we used to submit uh, for, this research fund, for the research funding. Okay, so we have also registered two of our startups for um, marketing of our AI artificial intelligence based products. So one is AI care, uh, which is working since one year and the other one is recently been uh, uh, registered in SCCP, which is Cypher Technologies. So we have plans to um, market our products through these startups. Now, uh, some of the international challenges that we have won. So the first one is a TB classification challenge. So uh, our team stood fifth uh, from 77 participating teams. The second one is tuberculosis uh, classification and detection challenge. So we are actually uh, coming uh, at number one position since one year. So it's a huge um, achievement for our lab because the, uh, the model that has been working behind the tuberculosis artificial intelligence based diagnosis algorithm is uh, at number one since one year. Then we also participated in national idea bank competition in which our one of our uh, product the which is for breast cancer diagnosis stood third at national level. Then we also participated in Mekai Bratz challenge in which our brain tumor uh, survival prediction uh, algorithm stood third at international level. So these are some of the challenges that our models have won. So it means that the models that we have indigenously developed in our lab are actually up to the mark and they are actually working at eco level with international and they can compete the international level. So uh, now coming towards our, some of the events and trainings that we have uh, organized so far. So we have international, we have two uh, industrial events that we have uh, organized and then two five day training programs in which we actually call doctors and neurosurgeons and people from diverse backgrounds to come and to listen to us what uh, artificial intelligence is and what is uh, what we uh, what uh, wonders that ai can do in uh, medical domain because we were uh, receiving many requests from people of diverse backgrounds to actually arrange a seminar so that we they can learn what ai can do so we uh, specially designed the uh, the schedule uh, the complete uh, schedule for uh, people of different backgrounds so that they can learn what AI can do. So we got a very good response from people outside the, uh, out, uh, of different fraternity. 
so this is just the some of the screenshots of uh, flyers and some pictures that we uh, plan some um, events and organize the trainings now coming towards our um, collaboration with different hospitals so we have uh, signed some dus and agreements with uh, hospitals in different uh, companies so first one is with um, Shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto Medical University. Then we have a DUU with uh, an NDA with Park Health Consultant Company for marketing and commercialization of our products. And then we have one DUU with Robert Pendy Medical University. And the most recent one we did with uh, uh, Dr. Atar Inam from uh, for our with uh, Al Khan Hospital and Medical College Foundation. And we are very much hopeful that in the future we will take along with uh, this collaboration in for commercialization as well as for research purpose. Uh, this is a list of different uh, events that uh, medical imaging team have participated and they went there for showcasing of our products and to tell people that we in Pakistan are here and then we that we are developing products that can assist radiologists that can assist doctors and then and that we have developed some algorithms that are um, actually competing with, at international level. So uh, our lab has participated in all these events. Uh, these are some of the international collaborations that we have uh, uh, we have done and we are going on with them and we are doing some uh, amazing projects with them. Okay, so uh, these are some of the clippings that uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, that uh, of uh, hospitals and laboratories that we have uh, visited for commercialization purpose and deployment of our products. So, like you can see, Advanced Diagnostic Center, Healthways, IDC and CMH as well. So their response was quite good. And we are uh, in conversation with them for deployment of uh, artificial intelligence based products. And they are happy and they have given us some more suggestions to improve our products as well. Okay, so uh, we are also uh, available at social media. You can see our website, you can see Facebook page and LinkedIn page in which we uh, update them uh, regularly with our events, with our upcoming uh, products. Uh, we are live, so you can see them. And uh, thank you so much uh, for um, inviting us here. I'm so honored to uh, be here and to present. Now I would like to call Noman Bashir for uh, uh, giving a brief demonstration of our product that we have developed in our lab. So please, Noman. My name is Naman Bashir. I am working as a research assistant in MID lab of NCAI. So I, with my team, developed has AI-based Diacom Viewer. So you might have worked with Diacom Viewer, but this is an AI-based Diacom Viewer we developed in MID lab of NCAI. So in this tool, we have added some common image manipulation tools. In the right you, left, you can see there are image tools. We can have, have added pan tool, zoom tool, and magnify tools, invert tool, and brightness tool. So you might have seen these tools in some other diacom viewer. Besides that, we have added some other marking tools to mark disease part, in which we have lens tool, pan tool, circle tool, and the rectangle tool. So we can mark any disease part with these tools along with the nodes. So with, what is the disease? In the left right side, we have, you can see that image like a AI diagnostics and the image modalities. So here you can see T1, CE, T2, T, and player. So this is the demonstration of Dicom viewer. So we can move the slider to see any slice in this view. So you can move the slider to view any slide and you can click on the left, right panel to click any modality to see its slices. So it's moving. This is the flare modality. And then this is T1. You can select modalities from the right side and then you start moving slider to see its slices. So these are the some image manipulation tools. We can see magnified to this, this part and this is window width and window control. This is the lens tool. And then this is the circle tool. And these are the measurements. We draw any 
uh, like circle or length or angle tool. We can uh, add nodes along the each measurement. So while we are working this uh, model, behind the scene, um, A model is working. So it will be loaded and you will see the A prediction on the right side. Actually, there are a lot of slices, so it will take approximately one to two minutes for each slices. So you see this is loaded, there is a brain icon and this is the explorer icon, then there's, then there's a sandbox icon. So you click on the AI panel and you see there are the AI predictions. So this is this show the survival rate and this is every dice score and these are the enhancing tumor details. So this is the predicted part of brain tumor segmentation. These colors show that where is enhancing and non-enhancing tumor. Next, we can see change layout and we can see the predicted part on all the modalities. And in the same, we can move the slider to see the, the segment, segmented part on each modality. So on the predicted part, we can also use those in those image manipulation tools for the references purpose. And we can view any part for zooming purpose to so select the single layout. And then we can same the use marking tools for the predicted image. So in the left panel, we can see there's a reporting options. We can click the generate report button. It will predict the, uh, like uh, get the image from the DICOM header. And it like is so like uh, patient name, patient ID and gender. And also it shows the AI predicted reports. So here we have added the options for the radiologist to add some comments and it will generate the report in the PDF form. So this is the automatically generated report by our AI model. It will save the screenshot and uh, edit on the report. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. So, if there are any questions, we are um, uh, they are most welcome. Yes. So we will be will moving take to this, the. Uh, oh, sure. Sorry, are you, are you gonna finish it? I was just gonna introduce Dr. Kiran after. Uh, because the session is going on, so is that okay with you if I have permission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to do that. Oh, okay, go ahead. go ahead. Do that, please. Sorry. So, uh, so we'll uh, be going towards the uh, the question and answer session uh, of this uh, AI session. So I would like to introduce Dr. Kiran Aftab, who is a graduate of Dow Medical College and has masters in neurosciences from King's College, London. Uh, Dr. Kiran Aftab is currently the instructor in the Department of Surgery and heads the Artificial Intelligence Division of the Department of Surgery at Aachen University Hospital and Aachen University. So Kiran, if you could just help us with the Q&A session, and I would simultaneously request uh, if Dr. Uh, Professor Yasser Ayaz has any question or comments uh, before we take questions from the audience and participants. So thank you very much. Uh, this is Dr. Asar Ayaz on this side. Uh, it's a pleasure to join this uh, forum and special thanks to Dr. Athar Inam and Dr. Kiran Aftab for inviting me here uh, as the chair of the session. Uh, so uh, I think excellent presentation by our researchers who are working in uh, artificial intelligence for uh, various medical applications actually, and particularly for neuro-oncology, they have a very like, a proven solution with that they have uh, showcased and tested out in international forums as well and where it has proven its metal. So I think that uh, uh, artificial intelligence, as you know, it's uh, uh, like recently there was an article in Forbes and it's been going on 
for a number of years now that artificial intelligence is actually the new electricity. And actually in the future, as we are now seeing in Pakistan too, uh, uh, if, uh, like I had the National Center of Artificial Intelligence in Pakistan and our software now are deployed in from uh, uh, Pakistan's judiciary to uh, our law enforcement agencies to various other digitization, et cetera. There are so many applications and where we have produced artificial intelligence applications and they are now deployed in the field as well. So, uh, and we have very good and positive results from the government, very encouraging situation uh, all around in Pakistan. And it's really heartening to see and really encouraging to see that uh, leaders in the medical profession like Aachan University have also not uh, established whole AI departments and which uh, Dr. Kiran is leading as you just mentioned as well. And uh, it's uh, a pleasure to collaborate uh, with the National Center of Artificial Intelligence as well. It's an honor that we were able to sign MOU with Aachan University for this. And uh, we really look forward that our uh, medical imaging and diagnostics lab, as you, as you can see, they have been developing a lot of solutions. So uh, I think there are two things very important. One is that uh, uh, the encouragement for the researchers as uh, it is being done right now and some feedback from uh, the medical professionals, the ones who are actually using the, uh, like the tools in the field, that if they could try the uh, solution and uh, use it for their uh, like uh, everyday use and you know, the, for their practice, this would help give feedback and in turn improve the solution so that it can become better and better. And maybe after some time, we can maybe jointly even market it internationally. And it could become uh, like a, a, a recognizable icon from Pakistan's side that we've introduced the tool in uh, neuro oncology. And um, the second thing is that uh, uh, like, uh, if we are able to apply artificial intelligence and especially for those problems, as we, as we found for some other, uh, it's like we also have some projects running with other hospitals. So there was a vascular surgery based project it as well. So there are proven instances that uh, uh, AI-based tools have been able to identify and uh, like uh, make the relatively more correct diagnosis compared to like where there were really difficult situations and uh, it presented problems to humans, uh, you know, radiologists and where like their diagnosis slightly differed and AI actually had the closer diagnosis which was later found during the surgery itself. So uh, I think uh, that uh, I'll keep my comment short and inshallah uh, uh, we should actually have question answer sessions with the aim that uh, we, we should be able to adopt this technology and give some feedback to improve it actually. And let's hope that in the future, this will become uh, an iconic product from Pakistan side, which can actually not only be used just in Pakistan, but also abroad in China. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yasser for those words. Um, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. The floor is now open for questions. I would request you to please uh, briefly introduce yourself before you ask the questions and we have the volunteers around to pass the mic. Uh, kindly raise your hands if you have any questions. Hi, um, my name is Rabit and I'm a final year medical student. Um, so my question is that, um, there was this option which showed the survivor, uh, survival and the predictability of that. Which uh, tools or models and what predictors did you use to uh, predict that uh, survivorship? Because I think uh, brain tumor survival is based on the grade and the type of tumor as well as the molecular markers. I understand that AI could be used to detect these, but what exactly did you guys use to predict the, survival, uh, the survivorship? Thank you. So I think Dr. Tahir would like to answer this question. Uh, uh, a very nice question from your side. Uh, particularly uh, for the survivor prediction, we are not going to just look at the volume uh, or the MRI volume. We are actually looking for some additional features as well, like uh, the demography of that particular patient, like his age, number of days, how many uh, that particular patient is going to survive. And also we are going to identify some of the radiomic features as well, like what's the shape of the tumor is, what's the size of it, what's the density, what's the texture of that particular tumor is. So normally from different studies, what we have identified, different machine learning techniques have been available to identify the radiomic features. And with the combination of the segmented uh, image from the MRI volume, further we add up different radiomic features on top of it to identify how uh, expectedly, how many, how many days that particular patient is going to survive. Thank you, Dr. Dahir. Can we take the next question? 
Um, Assalamu alaikum. So uh, I'm Miral Nasir and I'm a second year medical student. Uh, my question was, first of all, I think this is very fascinating. So um, generally, I was curious to know that for a country like Pakistan or other LMCIs, how has the response been to this technology? And what kind of response are you actually expecting in the future? Like, are doctors or like surgeons receptive towards it? Or is there some sort of resistance that you're facing? Uh, yes, that is a very true uh, story which we are actually facing. Uh, normally, in the very beginning, when we have started this work, normally the doctors were not so much uh, uh, really inclined towards this situation. But now, when we have developed this one, a lot of different diagnostic centers, like Islamabad Diagnostic Center, they are quite keen in the brain tumor uh, segmentation volume uh, to identify where the tumors are. And uh, it is actually going to be useful for the, uh, for the remote areas as well. Currently, we are working on to minimize the size and the memory before, without compromising the accuracy. And if that particular system is been deployed in some remote area, some villages where there are scanners at least, so they just transfer, uh, transfer those particular MRI volumes and they will be compressed and that will be a lossless compression on top of it. And that compressed image are going to be transferred on the cloud where we are going to diagnose and we will identify as a second opinion to that particular doctor if a patient is there. So a doctor have a second opinion out of it, okay, uh, whether that particular patient is, is uh, diseased or not. And also that particular, uh, uh, that particular patient, how many days he or she is going to survive. So they can actually refer them directly towards the uh, big hospital with like Awa Khan and their, where there are surgeries going on. So instead like we are not going to actually replace the radiologist or the neurophysician we are actually facilitating them instead of identifying like normally the radiologist or neurophysician takes like 30 to 40 minutes to scan all the volume and make the reports what we are dealing with it just takes three to four minutes and even it's on the passive side the radiologists have not to do anything but when our technician have uploaded that particular volume it just takes three to four minutes and that will be available in front of the neurophysician uh, and they can, or the practitioner, they can just identify, okay, where that particular volume is and which volume has been infected. So it just directly, instead of going through all of the 155 slides, it just directly jump on that particular slide and uh, particular slice and then we'll just plan whatever the, uh, how to treat that particular patient. Thank you, Dr. Tahir. Do we have another question? Thank you very much. It was a very nice presentation. And due to my interest, it's very close to my heart. I am a neurosurgeon by profession. So basically, I have three questions. First question is, which type of a logarithm you use for detection? One is intensity-based marching system or some uh, atlas-based detection for this one. And uh, number two, what is the accuracy between low-grade versus high-grade tumors for you? And third is for technically, because you are focusing your uh, radiologist, but for a neurosurgeon, I want these models exported as a 3D in the DICOM so that it would be available to me for preoperative planning for the tumor and also some DICOM export to my neuro navigation so that intraoperative help may be helpful for this one. So I need all these questions okay. one by uh, one. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, number one, we uh, how we are actually working on, we have. Uh, some data sets which are already been available. And on those data sets, we have already, it's just like a newborn baby. So like a newborn baby, you just try to teach that particular baby. And the same story goes over here. We have benchmark data sets normally, which is uh, quite a benchmark data set like Brad's. And the radiologists, they have already have uh, different masks on it. They have the volume. And with that particular volume in a pair, they also have a segmented mask with those volumes as well. So it's not us who are going to train the system. Rather, it's the deep learning models who are going to understand the relationship between the segmented mask and the original volume. 
So number one, the first question, normally we are using the deep learning methods on it like uh, UNET and the transformers. And further on uh, to the next question, uh, mainly those uh, uh, particular patients or uh, those patients if they have been diagnosed. So that particular thing can be uh, seen on the, those particular DICOM viewers. Like for an ordinary DICOM viewers, normally we have on the left side, we just have normal uh, image processing technique. But even having some additional things on it, like AI-based CAD system, so that particular system is going to identify, okay, where that tumors are, like whole tumor, enhancing, non-enhancing, and tumor core, and they just make the heat map out of it. Okay, this is the tumor core, this is the whole tumor. And after those things, and that is already been trained by different, obviously, radiologists who have made those particular data sets. Accuracy between low grade versus high grade. In the high grade, there is uh, intensity, contrast enhancing, very good core, and there is flare edema. It's usually even intensity based model, model formation is easy, but uh, do you have some um, studies? It is more accurate. You have told your accuracy around 91% or 92%. Exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. The difference between low grade glamour detection and high grade glamour detection differences. Exactly. Uh, based on this, is the average accuracy which we have just uh, shown you over here around 91%. But otherwise, we have different sort of accuracies for the enhancing tumor, whole tumor, and the tumor core as well. So we have different sort of accuracies, like it is like from 86, 87% to 92 and 93%. And obviously, as you have just said, we use different modalities to ex actually extract those different uh, uh, different sort of uh, tumors for the segmentation. So uh, obviously it's not 91 for all of it. It's like, an, we have calculated the average score out of it for all of the three to four classes, how much on average that Thing is going to be performed, but as you just said, yes, there are different accuracies for the different sort of uh, tumors. Thank you. So my third question was for direction towards the neurosurgeon, if these models, extracted models can be exported as a DICOM so that I can use in my neuro navigation and fusing with my the traditional T1, T2 and contrast imaging there and forming the three-dimensional map so that exact uh, planning before surgery and during surgery, it may be helpful to me. Uh, yes, exactly. That's the thing what, when we were actually going to develop that system, we have used the DICOM wheels because there are different uh, uh, different extensions for the volume. So the most common thing was the DICOM wheels and we have used that particular DICOM wheel which my colleague just have shown you. And that DICOM wheel is going to facilitate, it's not like uh, a different sort of DICOM wheel, rather it's a wheel which can actually, uh, you don't have to learn really a lot on it, how to work. And on the rightmost panel, you can you have seen how that deep learning models have actually extracted uh, different types of tumors and the survival prediction as well. So we have take this into the note, like we have to come up with some sort of DICOM where which normally the doctors or the physicians, they are actually going to use it. Although yes, you are please. not working, you are your direction is towards the a radiologist and reporting purposes. If you just this on you have each slice on axial cut, you have made it out. This is core and this is the edema one. Mm -hmm. If you just mask the intensity of other pixels to other value, some extreme zero or something, mm -hmm. and just take this axial cuts for each one for this one and export as a DICOM again. So it will be a useful data set for me because exactly. I can use it in my DICOM viewer because for each one I have to make manually segmentation or intensity based segmentation for my neuro navigation. But if this software can do for me by exactly. checking just one, two, three minutes, you just you have made out on every, every axial slice which is highlighted other values of all pixels should be something extreme so that I can neg negate it or with the uh, this one. And then I can use fusion by the fusion with this one in my neuro navigation. Exactly. So if your team can think out this, so it will be more useful for a neurosurgeon. Yes. So that automatic modeling of the tumor, it's edema so that during surgery, our neuro navigations, so the work can be done manually 
will be done by your store. By, exactly. That's a really a nice suggestion. Now I uh, exactly understand what you are asking. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Yes, it is very, uh, it's not so much difficult. Like uh, we have already uh, masked those tumors, where those tumors are and where there are normal tissues. Yes, we can just nullify those tumors and we can just generate a 3D sort of tumorous mass out of that volume. It can be easily done. It's not uh, really a big, uh, big issue out of it. But it's a really nice suggestion. We will certainly will look on it. You're welcome. So I think it's going to be an interesting area to explore if you can integrate your tools within the existing neural navigation software that are being in use. So that, you know, like a plugin or an extension, exactly. and then you, they can easily use those tools within that software. Exactly, can be done. Right. Thanks. Um, do we have another question? Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. Um, I am a fourth year medical student. Uh, like I was listening to the talk, it's been very interesting. And I really wanted to know that this software has been very useful, like uh, he stated, that it is going to help uh, the future surgeries. I'm curious to know, are there any limitations to this, this uh, AI program that you have just started? Uh, yes, there are certainly a lot of limitations. One of the limitation is uh, basically a very refined data set which we have to extract from the local uh, local country. The, the, so the local data sets are the most, uh, I think the bottleneck for this, uh, like for the benchmark data set, it is working very fine and we have uh, completed different challenges and we got positions on it. But yes, if we have to deploy that particular solutions in like in Pakistan, yes, we have to see because one of the suggestion which I give it to you, like uh, in our model, we normally use 155 slices, but, the, uh, but in different hospitals, when we have got some different MRI volumes, like from Bahawalpur Medical College, there was only 25 slices. So that was a big breakthrough and it's based on a different scanners. So different scanners, different location, yes, these are the, some of the limitations. So for those sort of hospitals where they have different sort of scanners, yes, we have to come up with some of the pre-processing steps. It's not something we can just directly go there and deploy there to any location, no. We have to first go with a field study, which scanners they are using, how much they are working on. And like, if you have 25 slices, obviously there are, the accuracy is being uh, not as good as having a 155 slices. If we are going to generate a 3D model of the tumor, yes, it is a bit difficult for having only 25 slices of the volume. But if we have like a bigger volume, like 155 slices, then yes, we can even generate a 3D model, which over here you can, you have seen on the demo as well. So that is a big limitation. Thank you, Dr. Tahir. Uh, in the interest of time, we will now conclude the Q&A, uh, but the speakers will be around during the lunch break and you can ask more questions if you have. Uh, we also have a, a set up a desk outside the auditorium where the, uh, where the team would be giving a demonstration of this tool. We, we, have, we, have, we have several more minutes. Um, you do that? Showing five minutes here. Huh? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we uh, have. Can I can I ask? Yeah, actually, sure. if, if if you allow me, can I ask uh, Yasser, Doctor Yasser? Sure, Doctor. Sure. So, mashallah, uh, you know, Yasser is heading the NCAI, and uh, the other interesting thing about Yasser is he's an Abdalian. So, those who are Abdalians, they would know that. <laughs> okay. So, um, Yasser, if you can if you can uh, tell us about the six NCAI centers, where are those, and how many groups are working on this particular aspect? of brain tumors in the country and uh, overall on medical medical imaging. If you have any of that information, please. Thank you very much for your kind remarks, sir. And once again, thank you for inviting me here. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to join here. And uh, thank you also for visiting us uh, for the signing of the MOU and wonderful to see you in Islamabad as well, sir. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, and National Center of Artificial Intelligence, we have a huge responsibility of uh, integrating artificial intelligence, developing local tools and uh, like trying to advance the functions of various offices in Pakistan, various departments in Pakistan. And we have different labs located in various universities. The way the National Center came into being is that Higher Education Commission ran a competition throughout Pakistani universities. At that time, it was mostly government universities. And they picked out 
who are the best people working in artificial intelligence in Pakistan and identified those researchers. So there were nine people they identified and uh, decided to give one lab each to uh, these researchers. And then uh, the, the, these nine were located in the six universities, as you mentioned. So uh, the universities are NAST in Islamabad, a Comsats University in Islamabad. Then in Lahore, there is Punjab University and UET. The UET Lahore, there is a UET Shower in uh, KPK. And then there is NED Karachi in uh, Karachi, basically. And um, we have, other than that, we have funded several projects, for example, for uh, Shahid Bhutsul Fakadli Bhutto Medical University as well uh, in Islamabad. We have funded for FAST in Islamabad, Lahore and Karachi as well. So several different universities like LAMS, et cetera, have, are now also on board because using the flexibility we had with the research fund, we were able to like uh, invite applications from all over Pakistan. And from the people who submitted applications, we were able to identify uh, good researchers and uh, give funding to them. So uh, among them, there are people working in medical uh, imaging and diagnostics as well. So um, uh, like uh, there's the MID lab, of course, is the main lab, I think, in Pakistan. And, uh, you know, when artificial intelligence, like there are many algorithms available for free online as well. Uh, there are databases that you can find, data sets you can find on Kegel, et cetera, too. But the accuracy uh, of the AI algorithm very much depends upon the person behind the computer who's actually putting the program in. So uh, uh, medical imaging and diagnostics laboratory of Comsat University, uh, which is part of National Center of Artificial Intelligence, is actually the main lab, the key lab, which is like, spearheading this research with uh, medical imaging and diagnostics area. Also, we have AI for Healthcare Laboratory in UET Pichawa. So uh, there's one lab there as well. They mainly focus on thalassemia and uh, work with Khyber Medical University. And we also have, as I mentioned, we have a funded project in which MIDL is also involved, by the way. This is, it's a Shahid Dulpakaldi Bhutto Medical University, and this is for the vascular surgery side. So uh, from the radio radiology images, uh, we find out, like, uh, uh, you know, make the diagnosis uh, uh, for the, to assist the surgeon actually before uh, pre-surgery. And then of course they can do the surgical planning on, on that as well. Allah. So, uh, and there are several other areas also where NCA has contributed, as I had mentioned earlier. So uh, we have, for example, systems deployed in the Supreme Court of Pakistan, which help uh, identify the relevant cases, for instance. So like we have text and data mining based solutions as well. Those also have applications in medical sciences, like because there's a huge textual data as well. There's a huge uh, like uh, numerical and character set based data based on the diagnosis of the doctors. And if you want to digitize, for example, prescriptions written by doctors or like uh, what uh, uh, a particular uh, like diagnosis and then treatment resulted in uh, uh, like um, outcome at what amount of time or something. So this kind of solutions can also be developed, which are being used by international researchers in various hospitals, as you know. So and also for the law enforcement, our system is deployed in the safe city uh, in Lahore as well. And I'm uh, it's a relevant thing because I'm happy to share that we were able to actually catch three miscreants, real in the field. So uh, in the last PSL, which actually helped make the PSL possible. So uh, we, we have a huge responsibility, changing dimensions, uh, uh, informing people, educating them about artificial intelligence and working with uh, esteemed professionals like your kind self, sir, and uh, trying to develop solutions which can actually help and aid the Pakistani uh, society and people as a whole to actually bring them to. And I'm, I'm lucky, I'm a scientist. I was a part of the whole uh, team who was competing for, uh, you know, getting a lab in the center. And it was through the competition that I was uh, picked up by ATC and Planning Commission after an evaluation of over a year to lead the overall national center. So it's a great honor again to be here and uh, to actually uh, speak at this session. Please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yasser, for the comprehensive overview of NCI. Uh, Dr. Bilal has a question. I had a simple question for uh, Dr. Tahir Mustafa regarding your experience for uh, uh, data set acquisition and uh, the uh, imaging features. Uh, do you think that there is an enhancement or uh, better accuracy when you go for looking for features on a 3D uh, image like multiple slices of an MRI for especially for brain tumors? as compared to a single segment, a, a single transfer section only? Uh, thank you for asking. Yes, uh, for, in terms of acquisition of data, uh, particularly locally, if we are talking about, yes, we have uh, faced uh, numerous challenges. 
uh, one of the main challenges uh, because everywhere around the Pakistan, we have different scanners, number one. And then we have different intensity, how they are actually acquiring those particular data. So that is another challenge which we are actually facing because uh, those model have to be, uh, if we have uh, transmit that particular volume, we have to do numerous pre-processing steps before actually giving it to the uh, AI based model. So that is, yes, these are, these are some of the challenges which, which we are actually facing uh, in Pakistan. Compared to the accuracy that you get for a volumetric uh, processing versus a single image, because at, at one end you have a challenge that various centers or the data coming into you for brain tumor imaging MRI is on different sc scanner that you just talked about a 25 image uh, data coming from uh, one of the center versus other centers which we have very thin slice MRI done with multiple sequences. So uh, do you propose that a local solution to begin with would be a single slice, slice acquisitions or, or processing? Uh, yes, we are, we are actually dealing, if we are facing those sort of limitations, uh, we are uh, going to have some sort of uh, like annotation of those data. So if we have uh, a limited number of like data sets, we can annotate those data like uh, there, there are different machine learning based uh, techniques which are uh, quite renowned around the world. So we can annotate those data and uh, like if we have only uh, three to four patients or five patients in our volume, we can actually have like three times to four times of that uh, particular data by using the flipping rotation and those sort of things. Uh, the second thing is, yes, uh, if we are acquiring that data, we have to be really, uh, like, it will be really good if we have a standardized sort of scanners all around the Pakistan. That will be really a good, which has not been seen, unfortunately, in Pakistan. So we have to come up with some different pre-processing steps before actually deploying those systems. How we are going to deal with that, like in Islamabad Diagnostic Centers in Islamabad, we have seen their MRIs, how those MRIs are. And then after looking at different properties of those MRIs, now we have some pre-processing steps so that that particular MRI will be compatible with that particular uh, models which we have already been trained. So yes, there are numerous challenges. And it's, uh, uh, by looking at this, I think it will be good if we have more number of slices. And then the second thing or the third thing, which I will focus on, if that particular hospital is located in some remote area, yes, now there is an issue of internet connectivity because the most of the systems are working even cloud and on site as well. So if we have to work that those systems on site, then obviously we have to have some high performance computers over there. If not, then there's an, a second flavor of it that is using the cloud. But for the cloud, if we have an MRI volume, which is quite big enough, and uh, depending on its memory and its uh, 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 those sort of things, so we have to reduce those memory spaces without uh, compromising the accuracy of that. So that is, again, a, that is a big challenge if we have to work on some remote uh, destinations for those sort of systems. Okay, Thank thanks. you. Uh, I think we'll take one last question. Uh, Yes, thank you, Dr. Tahir. It was really a uh, good kind of discussion. Uh, I was just wondering, this, this kind of diagnostic tool using artificial intelligence can be utilized for histopathology as well. So you can, you can, it's a kind of comment rather than question. So histopathological, uh, we had a, yesterday a presentation from Professor Wu, and you can use that histopathological diagnosis and incorporate the MRI images, and then it can give you a kind of a preoperative clue what kind of tumor it, be, it may be. I mean, the molecular data can be, can be given to the artificial intelligence system, and then it can pick up the, and give us some clue about molecular data. And my, my question was about um, how many, how many, scans do you need to put into the system to increase the sensitivity and the specificity of your diagnostic tool? Did you get my question? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you very much for asking. Uh, yes, uh, for in terms of uh, the how much, how much data that we want actually, 
I will come up with the second question first. So the data is yes, we it's because those models are data hungry. So as much data which we have, this is good for the model. So it's not restricted like, okay, like uh, we have uh, 350 volumes of different patients or so. So it's quite enough, no. We have uh, different, as I mentioned earlier, we have different annotation techniques to replicate those data like by flipping, by rotating without actually affecting the uh, MRI volume. So it's there is no limitation, no boundary, how much data what we want. And even uh, the studies which we are working on, they are even not restricted to like 300 or 400 patients. We are actually by using annotation, we have made it like for 2000 patients by different techniques, the machine learning techniques. So that is, uh, it's again, it's a data hungry algorithm. As much data is there, it's it, it will perform better until unless the data is good. That is again a limitation. So okay. data should be fine. So that is uh, as much data that we want, we can have, uh, it's it's good. Uh, the first Thank you, question, uh, Dr. Tahir. Yes, yes. Um, I think we can uh, continue with these discussions during the lunch break as well. Yes. We'd like uh, to conclude the session now. Uh, I'm really thankful to the Comsats team for coming all the way from Islamabad for this session. And I think everybody liked and learned a lot from this session. Um, thank you, Dr. Uh, Yasser Ayaz for, and Dr. Bilal Madhur Qureshi for uh, chairing this session. We have some certificates of appreciation for the team from Comsats. And I would like to invite Professor Dr. Sayed Athar Inam on the stage and uh, Dr. Bilal Madhur Qureshi to please hand over the certificates. So for the first certificate, I would like to invite Dr. Tahir Mustafa Madni on the stage. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Maria Nazir on the stage. Okay. <laughs> 